so you're here today for a physical for gymnastics it seems. Um, everything looks good. You are right there, you look kind of worried. I'm fine. Alright, you sure about that? I do have a question. It's been bugging me for a few weeks. Alright, ask away. If someone were to develop Huntington's disease, where is that coming from? Well, for a biology project, I learned that Huntington's disease is a hereditary brain disease and a few weeks ago my mom tested positive for it and that means that I'm at a 50% chance of getting it too and I'm really worried for her and I don't know what to expect. So what symptoms have your mom shown so far? She's got slight tremors and she forgets things a lot like where she put her car keys and she's clumsy. She trips over nothing and she bumps into stuff a lot. Yeah, this is common in early onset uh, in adults for Huntington. So what about later on? Do you really want to know? Okay, so you have arm and leg jerking movements. She'll have problems with her vision, and eventually she'll have problems with eating and swallowing. So when would I start to develop symptoms if I had Huntington's? This is Jessie, my intern. She'll tell you. There are two types of Huntington's, adult onset and early onset. Adult onset Huntington's usually starts in the patient's 30s or 40s. Well, if you do develop symptoms, I recommend you to come back to get treated. We can also give you a pre-symptomatic blood test that will determine whether you have Huntington's before the symptoms appear. But the test won't tell me when the symptoms will appear, though, right? True, scientists are still trying to figure that out. I don't even know if I want to know if I have the gene or not. I want to live my life right now. I'm only 18! This is my intern, Carol. In early onset Huntington's symptoms might show up as early as your teens, but in some cases they might show up even earlier, because as Huntington's is passed from generation to generation, the symptoms become evident more quickly. And if you're still worried about this, I recommend you for genetic counseling, and their professionals will tell you if you have inherited that certain gene for Huntington's, and if the test comes back positive for Huntington's, they'll also help you with future action. and I couldn't concentrate. Distract or relax, Mary? Relax? Yes, relax. When was the first time you experienced symptoms? Well, in the past two months, my arm has been tingling on and off, but I thought it was just stress, so I shrugged it off. In the last two weeks, it started twitching like this, and I couldn't concentrate, and today it just gave off. You don't think it's Huntington's, do you? We have to do an MRI and then blood testing to make sure if you have Huntington's or not. Exactly. This doesn't look like a normal brain. And your blood test came positive. Oh, Huntington's. This can't be happening. Is that a picture of my brain? Why are there a bunch of holes in it? The Huntington's gene has destroyed many of your nerve cells. This area right here, your basal ganglia, the area most affected by Huntington's, is much smaller than one in a normal brain. So the basal ganglia is the part of my brain that controls movement, right? Exactly. And because your basal ganglia is damaged, the nerve cells aren't able to transmit electrical impulses, and that causes the involuntary movement in your arm. 
Can you tell me more about the Huntington's gene and how it destroys nerve cells? Yes, of course. So you have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Unfortunately, in someone with Huntington's, there is a defective gene on chromosome 4. This causes a section of DNA called the CAG repeat to show up more times than normal. In healthy people, it should only repeat 10 to 35 times. Yours, however, it repeats up to 120 times and creates a protein that causes cholesterol to build up to dangerous levels and react with another protein in the brain. I know that cholesterol also communicates between nerve cells if you have the right amount, but if you have too much, that it can disrupt communication between nerve cells and my ability to think, talk, and move will decrease. So how am I supposed to live a normal life like that? We can give you medication. There's tetrabenazine, the first FDA-approved drug for Huntington's, and it will help your involuntary movement and the pain, but it might cause nausea and drowsiness. And if you have any suicidal thoughts, you should report them immediately. So I recommend that you get a speech therapist because Huntington's slows down your ability to possibly complete full sentences as well as a physical therapist to help you with your muscles from becoming less weak and muscle rigidity. Sadly, there is no cure for Huntington's, but stem cells look promising as they can help fill the gaps in your brain. So the best way to treat yourself is to stay positive and will help you through it. Huntington's is a brain degenerative disease that has been affecting my life now for three years. My symptoms have become increasingly worse, but fortunately I'm still able to go through a normal day with little assistance. However, there are other people out there with far more progressed stages of the disease. Due to the severity of the brain degeneration, they are just as dependent as infants. And although this disease is not very common, for those who do have it, it's devastating. 30,000 people are currently affected with the disease, and 200,000 Americans are currently at risk of inheriting the disease from an affected parent. We need to help these families. They can't go through this alone. And much more money is still needed for research. So please call the Hunting Disease Society of America at 1-800-345-4372 and donate today. We appreciate your thoughtfulness and happy holidays. Stop recording me right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway.